statistics is a powerful tool. It tells us the truth and helps us make wise decisions in business or life. However, data only tells the half of the story. It does not take into consideration the context in which we find ourselves, our drive, our vision, our dreams that we might have. And we are not looking at those elements and only focusing on what data tell us. It might potentially missing out the opportunity that can and often do change our lives. So what exactly is statistics? It's a representation of a data set collected over a period of time. Not surprisingly, have clear finite beginning and a clear finite end. So then, any statistics we are viewing is all the data collecting in the past. And often, we use the data collected in the past help us to inform and predict our future. As a CEO and founder of my own business, while working with founders from all over the world, I understand statistics firsthand for startups. Today, according to research done by Failery, 90% of startups fail. 10% of them failed within the first very year. And less than 3% of a female fund venture ever receive venture capital, according to Forbes. Had I relied on that data, it wouldn't make much sense to start a business. In fact, I don't know why people do, given that information. But when we factor in other elements, the vision, the dream, the drive that we might have, the entire picture shift. Many of us did not know that among those failed entrepreneurs, they later start second or third businesses, or join another exciting venture. The earlier failure become later success. Let's take Keiko, for example. A web-based calendar company started 2005. What seems a promising success come to the end immediately when Google released its calendar feature 2006. Keiko immediately lost all its business traction and was put on sales on eBay. Well, most of us will stop right there at that first failure. After all, the data was true. They were one of the 90%. But with a lesson learned and a series of new ideas, the founder eventually landed on what will eventually become a live streaming platform, Twitch sold to Amazon for a billion dollars years later. As you see, without the failure of the Kygo and the lessons and experiences gained from previous repeated failure, the latest success would never be possible. Data might offer one perspective, but really tells us the full picture. It is our interpretation of the data, or in this case, the ignorance of it that can change the course of our lives. Most of us intuitively understand that the past never equal to future, despite what Confucius might say. In any given moment, we always have a choice. We get to choose to focus on what data tell us what it was versus what it could be and take action accordingly. Let me tell you some of my personal statistics. I am born and raised in a little tiny mountain village in southeast part of China. Where I come from, 33% of my family members complete high school. 0% of us finish college. 0% of us have a working internet. 0% of us have a car. So if you want to visit any nearby city, we hop on the bus, we go around the mountain, and around, and around, and around. Eight hours later, you arrived. So as you can imagine, in a little charming town like that, people born there, 
People live there. People die there happily. Where I come from, girls are taught to stay quiet, smile often, and don't make waves. Statistically speaking, there's path laid before me. I was always meant to grow into a mother, a wife, a sacred role that generation of women in my family have all embraced. But I just never see that for myself. For as long as I could remember, I was staring to the sky and just staring at where the mountain meet the cloud and just daydreaming. Just daydreaming one day I will go see the world beyond my village, even though there's no sign of different possibilities for me. On one random library trip, I find a cassette machine and an English tape in the corner. That moment, without knowing what I was, I thought, you know what? I'm going to teach myself English so I can possibly apply for college. Maybe that will be my ticket to see the world. So there I began. As an Asian, we always thought we were smart. So I thought, ah, oh, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. She'll take me six months, a year. I should be on my way in no time. The journey was nothing like I anticipated. I sat for TOEFL exams and failed not just once, not just twice, but failed five times total. I was so disappointed. I was so defeated. I thought about what others have told me, that I am so crazy, I'm so out of my mind to dream so big, to dream something so beyond my reach, time and time again. And maybe they were right. Maybe I'm just not good enough. Maybe I should just go back home, being that good girl, the whole family, the whole village want me to be. Had I looked at that data, my path Will be completely different. Another opportunity presents itself for me after four long years try and nine major failures attempt. I finally succeeded. So 2011, I was on my way to the United States to start my American dream, and that was exactly 11 years ago. Statistically speaking, a girl like me, never meant to attend college, get a grad school degree, or even an MBA from Duke University. Statistically speaking, a girl like me never meant to come this far beyond her little village, to come see this whole new world where she has no background, she knows nobody, she barely even speak the language when she arrived. Statistically speaking, a girl like me never meant to come from a startup world, to a Fortune 100 company, to later start our own business, to support and empower founders from all over the world. And I'm so grateful to be here. Had I relied on what statistics told me, I might not even have tried, or I would stop long before I succeeded. As I reflect on my own personal journey, as well as countless of other incredible entrepreneurs, business owners. I see three things they did to help them make their vision come true. First, they believe in possibility. Many of our greatest invention and prolific business start with one idea, one notion, and one belief that something else was possible. Despite challenge by the expert in the beauty industry, Jamie Carl Lima believes it should be a product designed for sensitive skin people like her and many others. She believed in changing the conversation about beauty. It took Sarah Brickley, the founder of Spanx, two failed attempts at law school, seven years of selling fax machines, yet she still believed impossibility. She grew Spanx into a household name and a billion dollar business. There are countless of other innovators, 
entrepreneurs, and everyday people who believe in possibility. In every single case, the odds were stacked against them. Yet they persevere. In Chinese, the word "crisis" translates into "way d" two words. The first word "way" means challenge. The second word "d" means opportunity. In our culture, we intuitively understand that on the other side of a challenge, when we believe in possibility and when we persevered, that's when the opportunity arises. As I stare at the sky, as I dream about the world beyond my mountain, I have no idea how I will ever make it happen. All I knew is I have committed to a different future for myself. I make a decision. I have no backup plan. At least not the one I can live with, and that decision changed my life. Second, burn the boat mentally. In his book *Art of the War*, Sun Tzu taught his army to burn the boat and bridges as they advance to new territory. After burn the boat, the only way home is to succeed. At its core, burning the boat represents a commitment, commitment to never return. Therefore. All your mental efforts, your thoughts, your belief, focusing on succeeding and reaching whatever possibility you have dreamed for yourselves, it forces us to get creative, because there's no other way. You have to make it happen. It is an act of burning the boat, give us actually extra strength to move forward. In my work with many entrepreneurs, I see so many founders work through their nine-to-five jobs. As they start their business, it might make sense, especially at the beginning. However, clinging to your nine-to-five jobs while scaling your very exciting startup venture will actually hold you back. It sends a signal to your investor as well as yourself that you don't believe it will work. Many people ask me, "When? How would you be this brave?" How would you be that one person who ever left your family, your village? And yet, I know deep down in my honest truth, I was not brave. I choose an easy path because I always know either I live or I die. There's no other way. When I find a cassette machine and decided to learn English, I honestly have no idea what can happen. All I knew is, I have to make it work. There is no backup plan, and that moment, that choices, changed the entire course of my life. Third, take action and wait. The only thing left to do is to take action and wait. Because after you burn your boat, there is no other way but moving forward. But yeah, this is the most challenging step among all. According to University of Scranton, today 92% of people who set New Year resolution never actually achieve them. If all of us all believe in possibility, why not many succeed? Let me tell you a little story. I don't know if you know, in our culture. Chinese people, we love bamboo. Do you know why? When you first plant the bamboo in your yard, you give it the nutrients, you give it water, you give it sunlight, you give it all the things it needs, and you wait it. A month later, a year later, four years, eleven months later, nothing happens. But yet, at year five. Within five weeks, the bamboo grew 90 feet tall, shoot up straight in the sky. In the past five years, what seems like nothing happened on the surface, it actually worked 
day in and day out, to grow as root, burn in the ground, to set a nice foundation to grow tall and strong in. Many of us, we start taking action, like get on a new diet plan or start new workout routines. We love it, we try for 30 days, we don't see the result, so we quit. Tony Robbins once said it the best. We overestimate what we can accomplish in a year, but we underestimate what we can achieve within one decade. According to research done by James Carrier, a series of entrepreneurs who are looking at successful big technology firms have in the last three decades. Look at all the amazing successful companies that we can all love. Think about Google, Amazon, Airbnbs. You got a picture. With all the success they created, you know what you found? Only 4% of the value was created between year 0 to year 10. That means 96% of the success was created after year 10. I know deep in my heart, a mountain girl like me never meant to come this far. It only took me near two decades of every single day to believe in my American dream and hustle every single day so I can be good enough, so I can be humbly stay on the stage to share my story with you. As you look at the path before you, pick a plan or any plan and keep going. That Zagler said it the best. You don't need to be great to get started. You need to get started to be great. So, what possibility are you daydreaming about? What is something you want to make a difference or create an impact? Let go of statistics. Let go of what others tell you what you can or cannot achieve. Data might offer one perspective, but it's our interpretation of the data that can change the course of our lives. It's always up to us to decide what we want to focus, what it was versus what it could be. So what boat do you need to burn? What mentally and emotionally have you decided you could not live without having? Is it a new career, a new adventure? And what action are you taking today and every day? If a mountain girl from a remote village in China can come this far, so can you. So dream big, everybody, because if not you, home. If not now, when? Thank you.